Good afternoon everyone. This is Linda with Linda Sue Plants for You. Um, I did a video the other day um, <clears throat> about some plants that I needed to repot. Uh, some just have outgrown their pot and some I overwatered, believe it or not. So um, I'm not going to go into all the reasons why that happened, but just know that, you know, that that's the reason that I had to pull them out of their pots. Oh, great. Don't know how that happened. Oh, all right. So, <clears throat> huh. One of the, well, this, this one is a, um, uh, it's from the, uh, Tradescandia family. It's been referred to as the, a boat lily or Moses. Um, hmm. Moses in the cradle, I believe it is. I've heard it called. So this was um, another one of my gifts from Suzette from Suzette's Gardens. If you haven't seen her channel, you should check her out. She's got a lot, a lot, a lot of beautiful and some rare uh, plants that we don't see too often and come spring she's going to have her garden all up and running again and that's just as beautiful so uh, take a look at her channel and I'm sure you won't be disappointed um, what I want to do today is just try to make this not real real long because the other my last video was almost an hour and that's I think just too long for some people to sit in front of one video. I know there's those of you that um, really enjoy watching my videos have told me some have said they're not long enough and I wish they were longer and I, I'm i so happy I have you as my plant friends. Um, but I do understand people are busy and they sometimes just want us to get to the crux of the matter. So that's what we're going to do today and it's probably still going to run into a little longer than most people's. but. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put this one in the, this pot. Here, I, and I washed this pot out. This this was holding my um, asparagus spring wine, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And this comes with a with a tray on it, which. I've been seeing a lot of these lately, and I, I'm not sure if I like them or not. I think I think it's okay. Um, I like the fact that it catches the water, and I don't have to buy separate trays to put in the pot to keep it from uh, dripping, and I don't have to take it over the sink to water it. So for that purpose, you know, it, that's, that's really nice. Um, but I'm not used to seeing a saucer stuck to the pot. It almost looks like it doesn't belong in the air. It kind of, to me, it looks like it should be on a table. But that's just me. All right. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to change my mind here because this other one is really getting in the way of my planting. And that is this asparagus spring ray. Now, <clears throat> I explained yesterday that this plant has a lot of really lush growth on it and 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 it had even more and I lost a lot because it was it was pot bound and I was watering this thing every single day and it was still dry so that told me that I needed to look at the root system and see what's going on kind of figured it was root bound but I was a little surprised when I took it out of the pot and saw how bad it was root bound and I want to show you that, and then we'll pop this up and get it out of the way. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Look at that. Just, do you, can you just see? I mean, and it's solid. It's packed solid. I don't even know how it's still growing. Um, I'm not going to attempt to pull this apart, obviously. And... You know, this this is still feeling damp to me, wet to me. So that's where my dilemma comes in with this plant. While those roots are feeling damp, I'm still getting browning. And I think it's because it's not 
the water isn't reaching all of the roots. Some are dried out and need water and some are uh, wet and shouldn't have any more water for a couple days. So I am going to put that plant in here, a bigger pot, give it a little more space and I'm not going to water it right away because like I said this does feel pretty, pretty damp or wet to me yet. But would you look at that? I mean, my goodness. And here you can see the tuberous roots, I'm hoping. And those hold water. Those little bulbs in there, those hold water. So, and they're full. So this does not need to be watered. But we're gonna, we're gonna repot this today. I'm gonna just do this one real quick. <clears throat> and I'm gonna use my my normal soil. Oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> and that is, I, it varies a little bit from time to time. Right now I have the peat moss, I mean, the potting soil, organic potting soil, and perlite, and cocoa choir, and a little orchid bark. And it's a very, very light soil. It's very lightweight. So that's always almost always a good thing. I think I'm gonna just push this right over here. And I don't think you can see me doing this, but let me just fill this up real quick and then we'll get to the other ones. Um, because I I'm out of space. And unfortunately I have to sit when I'm doing this and I don't like sitting when I'm working. I've always been a kind of person who has to stand up in front of what I'm doing, but I'm not able to do that. So I have to sit and that gives me very limited space because uh, I can only go within arm's reach of where I'm going here. So I'm just going to quickly put this soil in here and then we'll... Then we'll get it. Kind of pack it down a little bit. Make sure there's no air pockets in there. I'm going to add a little more soil on this side. And that should do it. Okay. That didn't take long. Alright, I want to put the hook on there right away. I wonder how all of you are doing. We've had some very strange weather. Very strange winter for southeastern Wisconsin. I'm not complaining. It was a rather mild winter, which is good. But we're getting a lot of precipitation again, and that's concerning me because that happened last year and we we have the perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes and it was so bad you, you couldn't even sit out on the porch at all I mean I suppose if we treated it heavily with chemicals or something maybe but I don't like to do that so I didn't get to sit out at all. So I'm hoping that this summer will be different. I'm hoping we're going to have a dry, comfortable weather that we can enjoy because, my goodness, we wait all winter for that and it goes so fast, doesn't it? All right. I think she's good to go. So we'll get her out of the way. And then we're going to put her in here. I'm squeezing the pot to loosen the soil. I 
Oh boy. Yeah, her roots are all down in the bottom already too. So I'm gonna have to keep a close eye on her. Sounds it looks like she's gonna be a a fast grower. And that's okay. I can't wait till she gets big because she is such a beautiful plant. I absolutely love the coloring of this of this plant. Now, because this root ball is so much smaller than the pot I'm going to put it in, I decided to put it in the terracotta for now and then set that inside of the pot because... I, I de really do want to hang this plant. And this pot is a little bit too big of a jump from where we went. Maybe it's not. Maybe because of the type of plant it is, it might do okay in this. But I'm a little leery about that. I don't know. Let me check again. Yeah, no, this is, this is the right size right here. So we're going to put a little soil in the bottom. much because I don't want them to stick out too high. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry for the delay here. I'm just looking in the camera on the flip flip screen to see if you can see what I'm doing. I had to I had to move my camera stand for something else I was doing and it's got four adjustable things on it and you know once you get it in that sweet spot really it, that's ideal then I should just have left it alone but I needed to move it around and now I'm not quite sure if I got it in the right spot or not. I look through the lens before I start filming and it looks like I got it in the right place but then sometimes when I go to edit I have to laugh at myself because I realize you didn't see half of what I was doing and I know how frustrating that can be, so. This leaf is just hanging on by a thread, so we're going to just take that off of there so we don't have anything rotting. There. Very pretty. Well, I won't need the saucer because we're going to put her in here. And this already has a built-in saucer. And from, from this pot to this pot is going to be just about right when she outgrows this one. Which isn't going to take long, it doesn't look like. It looks like... It looks like I, I might have even been able to go into that, um, into this size, but I really don't want to overpot her and then have rip rot, so I'm not... This 
this is a different kind of a connector on here than what I'm used to. Near how he's coming out with new, new and improved, not always improved. Okay, that's that's that. I think she looks very pretty. I have, I gotta corral my husband one of these days and have him put up some more hooks for me in my dining room because this is really where I want this to be. Um, but I'm out of places to hang things from, so we'll see. Okay, I'm going to get that out of the way. And my ZZ plant, as you, if you remember from yesterday, this was really sad. It was in very bad shape. Now, I let it dry out overnight. I left it out of the pot, and these roots are still damp, so that, that tells you how much overwatered it actually was. I pulled off as much of the dead um, dead leaves, the, the ones that were soggy and mushy, and I cut those off, and I, I think I cut pretty much most of them, maybe not all, but that's all right. I will. I think it's going to be okay the way it is. So we're going to put this guy in here. And these, and I know better because these, these ZZ plants do not, they not only don't need a lot of water, they don't like a lot of water. I have several ZZ plants and the ones that I have do best when I just ignore them and forget about them. <clears throat> so that was not, that was not a good thing and I'm seeing, I already lost two leaves. And I'm really worried I might be losing a couple more. I sure hope not. I hope they're not all going to die on me. I don't think they are. It doesn't look... I don't know. We'll see. there. I'm trying to get myself accustomed to planting a little deeper than normal because I don't want the um, soil to come up to the top because I'm, I can make a mess. I go to water and I think I'm holding my watering can perfectly and the, the water hits the soil and boom, out it goes the other side. So I'm trying to just put this a little, little deeper in here so that the top of the soil line is, is kind of down in the pot. And I think that's more a problem with my, the shape of my watering can than anything else. So I've been on the lookout for something different for that too. You know, and I've seen some people use these, I think they're, they're sprayers, is what they're sold as. And from what I understand, they're fairly reasonable. And uh, I've seen some gallon sprayers where they just fill it up with water and they can either spray or they can have a, a, a it, where the water shoots out and you can water. And I'm wondering if any of you have any experience with that and if you've used it to water your plants and if so did that work did you like it or no because I am seriously considering getting one of those and although they're not that expensive I I don't want to waste my money on something I'm not going to use it's cloudy here today my friends Waiting for that sunshine again. And those weather guessers, they can't make up their mind what it's going to do. One day they're giving us a winter storm warning, and three hours later they say, Oh, we're not going to have that after all. Nope, we're not even going to have any snow. We're going to have a lot of rain. And about three hours later, Nope, we're not going to have rain either. <laughs> uh, you know, 
my other half of my family was in California, and when, whenever my, they come up here, my uncle is just so amazed at how often we have the Weather Channel on, and he's he has has mentioned a couple times. Oh, I don't know what's with you people with. Yeah, you know, you, you, when my dad was still alive, he 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 could watch that Weather Channel all day, and I was like that too. I'm kind of a Weather Channel junkie, or at least I used to be when it was all about weather and not all the other stuff they got now. <laughs> Uh, and then, yeah, he'd say, I, once you know what the weather's going to be, why do you got to keep watching it? I said, oh, my mom and I both said simultaneously, because it changes so fast. I mean, those of you that live in Wisconsin, you know what I'm talking about. You can get up in the morning and have a, a lined, either a light winter coat or a, a heavy spring coat, and by noon... You're in sleeveless tea and shorts. That's just how it is here. And I don't mind. I don't think I'd ever want to live anywhere else. I really do enjoy the change of seasons. At the end of a long, hot summer, I look forward to a cool, um, a cool, cloudy sky. But that's just because we hadn't had one in a while. And it goes the other way, too. Now, you can see this, how this is leaning here. That's what those other two did before they broke off. I think this might do the same thing. But I'm going to try and give it a chance. See if it, see if it works. I'll just put it in a safe place. Oh, and I wanted to mention these pots, too. I got these at the Dollar Tree. And I don't normally like plastic pots. I, I just have a thing about that. And... I don't know. It, no, no, opinion, no rhyme or reason to it. I just, I always think they look cheap and chintzy, and um, but you know what? They are. They're inexpensive. They're a dollar. And when you have as many plants as I do, it's nice to be able to pick up some cheap ones, um, at least for the interim. And terracotta doesn't always work good for all plants. Now I could have put my ZZ in a terracotta. But I prefer that one in plastic. And I think because I have come to the point where I, I forget to water it, if I had it in terracotta, I would probably kill it in, in the other direction. So I, that's why I have that this one in plastic. But it's got a, a saucer on the bottom that it just screws off. And it's sturdy and you can still stay focused because it doesn't have a lot of design in it. You can still stay focused on the plant and not the pot, which I like. Okay, I'm going to set that one aside. <clears throat> okay. One more i got to grab. Yep, and I'm losing another leaf. I don't know. I think I'm going to be able to save it, but I'm not sure. This was a big, full, beautiful um, Aglianema, or Chinese Evergreen, as it's known. It was huge. It was big. And I overwatered it and didn't know it. And I think I overwatered it more than once. This one is in my dining room. I moved it from the living room to the dining room. So I was used to watering it at certain intervals. And because it was getting a different light in here, it wasn't utilizing the water that I was giving it. Well, we're going to see, folks. We're going to put it in here. And I'm actually, I have two of these that are very similar, and I really didn't need two of them, so I'm giving one of these to my daughter, and then when she, hers grows up, she can split this with my granddaughter, and they'll each have one.
Yeah, I think I put too much in there already. Just trying to get the, the air bubbles out. This is such a lightweight uh, mixture that I don't want to want to make sure that it's I want to make sure I'm not leaving any air pockets. You know what happens when, when you do that if and I've had this happen to me sometimes this the water will make its own its own path that it wants to take. If you have air pockets in there, um, I don't know if you've ever seen, well I'm sure you have seen like dried mud on the side of the road or maybe in your yard or wherever and then you got these like little little squiggly things going down there and it, it's uh, that's where the water when it rains the water goes down into those little ravines and that's where it stays. And the same thing happens with our potting soil. Um, if you don't, if you don't check it, or you don't, if you don't know what it's doing, then you might want to check it and make sure that uh, you don't have those little ravines in your. In other words, when you water, if it's not going through the whole pot, then some of the roots may not be contacting that moisture, and then you could get a couple of dry leaves here and then. That happens occasionally on my big um, uh, golden pothos when I water it. So it does happen. It's not the end of the world. It usually uh, it usually only creates uh, maybe one or two dead leaves, but we don't really want dead leaves on anything. So I think I'm going to need a bigger saucer for this one, but I'll get that one more done. Uh, so how does she look? You think she'll make it? I hope so. And if she doesn't, it's okay. I'm. This does not have any sentimental value to me, so then it doesn't bother me as much. And if it doesn't make it, then I will, when I repot my other one, which is very near to needing it, I'll just subdivide that one and give her part of that one. But I think I'm going to be able to save this. I don't think it's it's completely gone. We'll see. All right, so we got that. <clears throat> and last, oh, not last. These are the pencil cactus that my daughter gave me, cuttings of hers. And she actually sent me a bunch of information. She was researching it uh, to let me know that um, I was questioning what what causes these to turn. They get bright, bright red and yellow and orange, golden orange. Um, that's why they're also called fire sticks. And... <clears throat> I often wondered why some of these, when I see them in the store, they're all green, and others of these are all full color. And I got mixed messages when I was researching, but I think she found most most of the um, sites that she went to said it's this, the stress of too much sun, which is what I thought was the case, but when I was looking it up, I... I kept getting other answers. One of them was uh, 
if you let it get cold, it'll get red. And that might be, if you're in a warm climate and it's used to that, and then you take it out of the heat and put it in the cold, I guess any kind of stress, and I know with most succulents and or cactus, that is true. It isn't just the light or the lack of. It's also the watering that can um, create stress. And I've heard that said a number of times by avid um, succulent growers. So... That's what we're going to do. We're going to pot these up. Let me put those in here. I don't know if this is too big, but I don't think it is. It, I think it'll be okay. Now I did leave the I did leave those sit out and get calloused over. I've heard some say you you need to let it sit out for a couple weeks. I heard that the other day. I'd never heard that before. Um, I find whenever this that's it calls for that method, it's anywhere from a couple hours to a day or two. It's basically you want this bottom to dry up and get a callus on it because otherwise when you put it in the soil that being open there is vulnerable to um, everything you know germs fungus and what have you so you don't want it to, to you don't want that to happen all right I'm gonna need to I'm gonna put a little water in here because it's very dry and they're not gonna stand up in there I already know that And while that is settling in, I'm going to just grab another pot. Yeah, that's plenty big enough. Okay. I had a different pot here, and I... But as I'm looking at this plant, I, that's going to be too big. So I had to grab another one. And they're right here in my dining room under the shelves. So, okay. Let's... Open in. I probably should have made a little bit of a hole. I thought it would go in easier than that, but I don't want to stress it out. So we don't want it to go all the way up to the first branch, because then it will rot. Okay. This one here. That should be good for now. Now, if it's not, I'll know the first time I water it. I think it probably could use a little more soil, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I don't want it to be too, too high. 
Oh, she's so cute, isn't she? Can you see? I think she's just cute. Okay. And now, last but not least, my philodendron Mikans. Or Meekins. I've heard it pronounced both ways. Whatever. Whatever your heart desires is how you say it, I guess. Okay, this is just a little bit bigger, and that's okay. I do not want this to go into any kind of shock. And I see new growth coming on here. So it's doing good. But it's it dries out very quickly. I mean, I, I was literally watering this twice a day. And I think it's because it's, the pot is too small. So... Here we go. Oh my goodness. That is really in there. Come on out. I promise you'll like it if you do. I'm gonna put you in a new your new home. Oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. Can you see? The size of the roots. It it's I mean it wasn't pot bound but it, it was it it needed more room. I made the right decision. Okay, we're gonna put some dirt soil in here. Hmm. Not sure about that. I must have wrapped one of these around and then it rooted in the in the middle of the stem, which is fine. That's another way you can propagate this plant and make it bigger. Or you can do it in water too. Okay. I think I might have to go get myself a, a pin and pin these down, or with a one anyway, because it's wanting to pop out and See where it's coming up? There's roots right here. I don't know if you can see that. Because I started to propagate it in this pot by um, wrapping it around the pot and then just putting 
um, a node in. And I'm going to have to get a a pin. You know, I use hairpins. They're old-fashioned hairpins, not bobby pins, and they work really well for this. And I'm almost thinking. Let me. Okay, I don't know why that happened. That makes me sad. Uh, there are some roots down here, very light, and I don't know if you can see that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go get some pins, and we're going to stick this down in the soil. And then I will get new, new plants from that as well. So just stand by a moment. This is one of the presents my daughter got me for Christmas. It's salon. It's from. It says Salon Care, and they are. I couldn't find them anywhere. I didn't think they made them anymore. Years ago, um, all of our moms, well, most everyone I know, including my own, used to um, wear their hair up in a bouffant. We called it, or or a beehive, or. At any rate, they did a lot of backcombing back then, and they needed the hairpins to kind of hold all that in place. I, I taped this goofy when I taped it shut. Okay, I'm just going to grab Oh, here we go. I'm going to have to do something with that. I'll just put them in a bowl. Oh my goodness, I'm about to have an avalanche of hairpins. Okay. I'm going to just take a few out of here, and then I'll show them to you, okay? Okay. And the difference between these and bobby pins, bobby pins are a little bit thicker, and they're together. And when you, there's no space between them. And they, that's for something different than what I was just talking about. And these hairpins work really good to hold down your cuttings. If you do this method where you wind it around your pot. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to leave a few of these. But I'm... I don't know how it became a circle like that, but I can see that side has roots on it too, so I'm just going to stick it down in there. Maybe at some point I will cut this, but for now, I don't want to stress it out any more than I already did. Now this one, we're going to put in here and stick this down. And you know if your if your roots are too thick, if it's too, not if it's a different kind of plant, and um, and the bobby the the hairpin doesn't fit around it, <coughs> you can either <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you can either spread it apart a little bit, or <coughs> I'm sorry. Or you can <clears throat> use uh, floral wire, or there's all different kinds of 
methods that will work. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Do I want to go all the way around with this? No, I don't. I'll <clears throat> leave well enough alone. There we go. Finished product. So I'm going to give this a good watering and get it in some under a bright light. One of my LED lights since we don't have any sunshine today. Okay. <clears throat> well, that'll do it for today, my friends. I'm glad you could join me and hope to see you again in the near future. And uh, I guess until then, wish you all good health and happiness. And remember what Pammy from Pammy's Plenty Things says. Try to do something nice for somebody today because you never know what they're going through. And you never know, you might change a life. Alrighty. And there they are, all put together and watered and ready to be put in their new place where they're going to live. Thank you again for coming, and uh, I wish you all a, a great week. Bye now.